Oh, what a beautiful morning! And oh, what a beautiful day! Oh, it was another weekend morning back in the kitchen on Drury Lane. And oh, <laughs> it was time to make the muffins! Usually fast asleep am I from making muffins all night long. <laughs> but this morning, I felt like singing. I feel like singing. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul <laughs> I've got peace like a river I've got peace like a river I've got peace like a river <laughs> in my soul Well, 50 years ago a young minister named Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a historic speech at the famed Riverside Church in New York City, declaring, My conscience leaves me no other choice. Dr. King described the Vietnam War's harmful effects on both America's poor and Vietnamese peasants and insisted that it was the moral imperative for the United States to take radical steps to halt the war through nonviolent means and encouraged the presence of peace. In fact, he said that he was one greatly concerned about the need for peace in our world and the survival of mankind. Come along, let's tune in to some experts of this historic speech by listening to it, being read by various participants of a celebration sponsored by the Schenectady County Human Rights Commission. And if you ignore this whole reality, and if you ignore this whole reality, we will find ourselves organizing clergy and layman concern committees for the next generation. They will be concerned about Guatemala, Guatemala and Peru. They will be concerned about Thailand and Cambodia. They will be concerned about Mozambique and South Africa. We will be marching for these and a dozen other names and attending rallies without end. Unless there is a significant and profound change in American life and policy. And so such thoughts take us beyond Vietnam, but not beyond our calling as sons of the living God. In 1957, a sensitive American official overseas said that it seemed to him that our nation was on the wrong side of the world revolution. During the past 10 years, we have, we have seen emerge a pattern of separation which has now justified the presence of U.S. military advisors in Venezuela. This need to maintain social stability for our investment accounts and for the counter-revolutionary action of American forces in Guatemala. It tells why American helicopters are being used against gorillas in Cambodia and why American napalm and green valley forces have already seen active against rebels in Peru. It is with such activity in mind that the words of the late John F. Kennedy come back to haunt us. Five years ago, he said, those who make peaceful revolution impossible will make violent revolution necessary. 
increasingly by choice or by accident. This is the role of the, that the nation has taken. The role of those who make peaceful revolution impossible by refusing to give up the privileges and the pleasures that come from immense profits of overseas investments. I am convinced that if we are to get on the right side of the world revolution, we as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. We must rapidly begin, we must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. When machines and computers, when profit motives and property rights become considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. A true revelation of the revolution of values will soon cause us to question the fairness and justice of many of our past and present positions. On the one hand, we are called to play the Good Samaritan on life's roadside, but that will only be a first initial act. One day we must come to see that we are called to play the Good Samaritan on the full roadside, and that the full roadside must be transformed so that men and women will not be constantly beaten and robbed as they make their journey on life's highway. True compassion is more than flinging a coin at a beggar. It comes to see that an edifice that produces beggars needs restructuring. A true revelation of values, revolution of values, will soon look uneasily at the glaring contrast because between poverty and wealth. With righteous indignation, it will look across the seas and see individual capitalists from the West investing huge sums of money in Asia and Africa and South America, only to take the profits out with them with no concern for social betterment of those places and countries, and say, this is not just. It will look at the alliance with the landed gentry of South America and say, this is not just. The Western arrogance of feeling that it has everything to teach and nothing to learn from others is not just. A true revolution of values will lay its hand on the world, the world order, and say of war, this way of settling differences is not just. The business of burning human beings with napalm, of filling nations' homes with orphans, and with riddles, of injecting poisonous drugs of hatred into the veins of people they normally humane, of sending home of men from dark and bloody battlefields, both physically handicapped and psychologically deranged, cannot be reconciled with wisdom, justice, and love. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of so social uplift is approaching spiritual death. America, the richest and most powerful nation in the world, can well lead the way in this revolution of values. There is nothing except a tragic death wish to prevent us from reordering our priorities so that the pursuit of peace will take precedence over the pursuit of war. There is nothing to keep us from molding a recalcitrant status quo with bruised hands until we have fashioned it into a brotherhood. This kind of positive revolution of values is our best defense against communism. War is not the answer. Communism will never be defeated by the use of atomic bombs or nuclear weapons. Let us not join those who shout war and through their misguided passions 
urge the United States to relinquish its participation in the United Nations. These are days which demand wise restraint and calm reasonableness. We must not engage in a negative anti-communism, but rather in a positive thrust for democracy, realizing that our greatest defense against communism is to take offensive action in behalf of justice. We must, with positive action, seek to remove those conditions of poverty, insecurity, and injustice which are the fertile soil in which the seeds of communism grows and develops. These are revolutionary times. All over the globe, men are revolting against old systems of exploitation and oppression. And out of the wounds of a frail world, new systems of justice and equality are being born. The shirtless and barefoot people of the land are rising up as never before. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. We in the West must support these revolutions. It is a sad fact that because of comfort, complacency, a morbid fear of communism, and our proneness to adjust to injustice, the Western nations that initiated so much of the revolutionary spirit of the modern world have now become the arch anti-revolutionaries. This has driven many to feel that only Marxism has a revolutionary spirit. Therefore, communism is a judgment against our failure to make democracy real and follow through on the revolutions that we initiated. Our only hope today lies in our ability to recapture the revolutionary spirit and go out into a sometimes hostile world declaring eternal hostility to poverty, racism, and militarism. With this powerful commitment, we shall boldly challenge the status quo and unjust mores and thereby speed the day when every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places a plain. You'll love it. You'll love a free muffin from the Muffin Man. And here's your chance to get one. A free muffin delivered to you directly in the mail for just showing today's charity that you care. No money or credit cards or purchases necessary. And here's your chance. Simply send a message of support to today's charity and receive a free muffin in return. Log on to themuffinmangives.org. Make today a giving day. Will you join the Muffin Man in giving to others? We look forward to giving a free muffin to you as a thank you. A genuine revolution of values means in the final analysis that our loyalties must become ecumenical rather than sectional. Every nation must now develop an overriding loyalty to mankind as a whole in order to preserve the best in their individual societies. This call for a worldwide fellowship that lifts neighborly concern beyond one's tribe, race, class, and nation is in reality a call for an all-embracing, embracing and unconditional love of, for all mankind. This oft misunderstood, this oft misinterpreted concept, so readily dismissed by the Nischis of the world as a weak and cowardly force, has now become an absolute necessity for the survival of man. When I speak of love, I am not speaking of some sentimental and deep response. 
I am not speaking of that force which is just emotional wash. I am speaking of that force which all of the great religions have seen as the supreme unifying principle of life. Love is somehow the key that unlocks the door, which leads to ultimate reality. This Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist belief about ultimate, ultimate reality is beautifully summed up in the first epistle of St. John. Let us love one another, for love is God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Let us hope that this spirit will become the order of the day. We can no longer afford to worship the God of hate or bow before the altar of retaliation. The oceans of history are made turbulent by the ever-rising tides of hate. And history is cluttered with the wreckage of nations and individuals that pursued this self-defeating path of hate. As Arnold Toynbee says, quote, Love is the ultimate force that makes for the saving choice of life and good against the damning choice of death and evil. Therefore, the first hope in our inventory must be the hope that love is going to have the last word." Unquote. We are now faced with the fact, my friends, that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with a fierce urgency of now. In this unfolding conundrum of life and history, there is such a thing as being too late. Procrastination is still the thief of time. Life often leaves us standing bare, naked, and dejected with a lost opportunity. The tide in the affairs of men does not remain at flood. It ebbs. We may cry out desperately for life to pause in her passage, but time is adamant to every plea and rushes on. Over the bleached bones and jumbled residues of numerous civilizations are written the pathetic words, too late. There is an invisible book of life that faithfully records our vigilance or our neglect. Omar Khayyam is right. The moving finger writes, and having writ moves on. We still have a choice today. Nonviolent coexistence or violent co-annihilation. We must move past indecision to action. We must find new ways to speak for peace in Vietnam and justice throughout the developing world, a world of borders on our doors. If we do not act, we shall surely be dragged down the long, dark, and shameful corridors of time, reserved for those who possess power without compassion, <coughs> might without mortality, might without morality, and strength without sight. Now, let us begin. Now, let us rededicate ourselves to the long and bitter but beautiful struggle for a new world. This is the calling of the sons of God, and our brothers wait eagerly for our response. Shall we say the odds are too great? Shall we tell them the struggle is too hard? Will our message be that the forces of American life militate against their arrival as full men, and we send our deepest regrets? <coughs> Or will there be another message of longing, of hope, of solidarity with their yearnings, of commitment to their cause, whatever the cost? The choice is ours, and though we might prefer it otherwise, we must choose in this crucial moment of human history. As that noble bard of yesterday, James Russell Lowell, eloquently stated, 
Once to every man and nation comes a moment to decide. In the strife of truth, uh, in the strife of truth and falsehood for the good or evil side. Some great cause, God's new Messiah offering each the bloom or blight. And the choice goes by forever, twixt that darkness and the light. Though the course, though the cause of evil prosper, yet his truth alone is strong. Though her portion be the scaffold, and upon the throne be wrong. Yet that scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. And if we will only make the right choice, we will be able to transform this pending cosmic elegy into a creative song of peace. If we will make the right choice, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our world into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. If we will but make the right choice, we will be able to speed up the day all over America and all over the world when justice will roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. So ends our reading. small, 
teach those who are in the small, because later on you will become great. But wherever you are now in your capacity, do it in the spirit of excellence, and that's doing the best that you can with what you have. And do everything in the spirit of love, because love tears down walls and brings people together and changes people's hearts. And as people's hearts change, that's where communities change. And as you become a change agent, now you are making an impact, an effective um, uh, instrument that you will be used to touch the lives that needs to be touched in these tumultuous and difficult times. And leave it a legacy for our kids to let them know that we stand together, that united we stand, and divided we fall. So thank you for coming to this event. We invite you to come Tuesday if your calendar allows and participate and partake in this historic and memorable, successful event. Thank you. Well, welcome back. I'm still trying to bake the muffins. But finally, finally, I think we're finished. I hope you enjoyed our show today. If you would like to make an order or donate muffins to charity, then please go to the website listed below. With every muffin order, we donate muffins to the charity of your choice. <laughs> I call it giving your dough to charity. I also encourage you to donate directly to the featured charity today by going directly to our website and getting their information. Thank you very much for watching and keep on dancing through life by giving to others through love. Let me finish baking these muffins and see you next time. <laughs>